First, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, the invitation. This has been a, a very stimulating week. And uh, I, I think I would like to thank all the organizers uh, that have been involved uh, in uh, this nice meeting, in particular, Asia, Irene, uh, um, Irene, uh, what else, Dario, and Yen, and also uh, Antonio. So uh, I will focus my talk on a very uh, simple example of collective behavior that happened in fish, when they, the fish schools, when they, they have to decide collectively when they decide collectively and spontaneously to uh, change their direction of motion. This is probably not as spectacular as uh, many other forms of collective behavior that can be uh, observed in nature and uh, that have been presented in this meeting, but at least it can be investigated quantitatively in control condition. And we can, you will see, I hope you will see that we can learn a lot uh, about the way uh, individuals interact with each other and how collective decisions uh, emerge from uh, these interactions. Indeed, one of the fundamental questions uh, in this field of collective animal behavior uh, studies is how groups make decisions collectively. And this comes down to uh, uh, understanding the mechanisms by which individuals influence each other and how these interactions are combined and integrated at uh, the uh, collective level. And earlier this week, uh, uh, Andrea Giovanni uh, Reina uh, presented one of very famous examples of collective decision based on direct interactions between uh, in individuals during the process of uh, nest site selection in honeybees. So in this situation, you have hundreds of uh, scoot bees that explore the environment for potential uh, nest site. And these scoots bring back uh, to the swarm some information uh, about uh, potential nest sites. And they share this information uh, with the other scoot uh, by uh, the means of uh, these uh, waggle dance. And the strength of these waggle dance uh, is directly proportional to the uh, site quality so that the schools that are committed to high quality site execute much more vigorous uh, dances and as a consequence they have a higher probability uh, to convince other schools uh, to visit their site and also they abandon their own site uh, more slowly than the schools that are committed uh, to lower quality site. So there is a form of competition of information uh, at the collective level, and the information that uh, succeed to grow faster uh, than the others will determine, in the end, uh, the final choice of the swarm. And all this story has been nicely described by uh, Tom Sillet in his book, uh, On Ebit Democracy. And in that particular case, in fact, the entire decision-making process requires some time. Uh, the dance activity uh, of the scouts can last uh, several days. But in many other situations, animal groups must take a decision on a shorter time scale. For instance, when a, a predator is detected in the, uh, in the environment, in the, in the neighborhood. And we, when this happens, for instance, in fish schools and, and bird flocks, the danger is generally uh, detected. Oh, the, the video is not working. But, uh, I don't know why. OK. No. So the, the, the danger is detected uh, by only a small number of, of individuals that, that change their, their, their direction uh, and speed. And this leads to the formation of an escape wave that propagates across the entire group. Uh, as you can see here, um, when a flock of starlings is uh, reacting to an attack by a, a peregrine falcon. So this ability to rapidly and coherently react to a perturbation certainly brings some uh, important benefits to the individual uh, as it can provide them uh, an advantage of detecting uh, predator, the predator faster. And there are also many other situations in which the perturbation is not triggered uh, by the presence of an external threat in the environment. A group may change uh, its collective behavior uh, spontaneously, simply as a consequence of stochastic changes that, may, uh, that affect the behavior of a single uh, or a few individuals uh, in the group. And these behavioral changes then propagate within the group, and they lead all individuals to adopt, for instance, a new uh, direction uh, uh, of motion, here, for instance, in, uh, in, in, in locust, or a new form of uh, collective motion, for instance, here, 
uh, and this work uh, by the group of, of Yen Cousin. So these situations are quite interesting because they can be analyzed and used. Uh, they, they, they can be used, in fact, to, to analyze in uh, undisturbed condition how these behavioral fluctuations arise at the individual scale and then how this information propagates within the group and determine the uh, change uh, in the collective behavior. So in the end, we expect to get a better understanding uh, about how individuals interact with each other during these events and how these dynamics of interactions can lead to uh, a collective uh, decision. And the first uh, important step to do this kind of investigation is first to find uh, both a species and a situation uh, in which we can observe in control conditions such spontaneous change in collective behavior. And the species that we have studied is uh, this one. It's uh, Rominos tetra, uh, Emigramus rhodostomus, which is a, a small uh, tropical uh, fish species that exhibit a strong schooling behavior and in which we, uh, that, that can be handled, in fact, very easily in control condition. And the average body length of this uh, species is about uh, 30 uh, millimeter. And uh, we found that when groups of these fish frim swilly in a ring-shaped term, they regularly change their direction of motion from clockwise to anti-clockwise and vice versa. So with this experimental setup, we can record a very large number uh, of these uh, collective U-turns, and by tracking the position and the heading of each individual uh, within a group, we can also analyze the uh, interactions between fish during these uh, collective uh, U-turns and how the information propagates within the group. So the, here is the, the experimental setup that we use uh, for this series of experiments. You see that it is protected from the outside uh, with white curtain, and uh, so there, there were no uh, external visual cues that can influence the, the behavior of, of the fish, and we filled the arena with a limited depth of seawater so that the motion of fish was mostly in two dimensions. Then we tracked the position uh, of fish with, uh, uh, with ID uh, tracker, and here is an example of collective U-turns in a group of four fish, and you can see the corresponding uh, trajectories uh, of, uh, of each individual during the U-turn, and also the degree of alignment of the fish with the wall, which goes from minus one to uh, uh, plus one uh, when the fish is swimming uh, counterclockwise after the U-turn. And on each of these events, we can then identify the time of turning of uh, each individual, so when the degree of alignment uh, with the wall equals zero, and also the position of uh, the uh, individual when uh, they, uh, they uh, make uh, the, their U-turns. Well, then we have investigated um, how these collective U-turns uh, arise in different group size from uh, single individuals up to 20 individuals. And for each group size, we have recorded a very large number of, of these events that you can see here. We have more than 5,000 events in, in total. And as you can see here on this graph, in fact, the, the, the size of the group strongly affect the ability of a group to spontaneously uh, perform a U-turn. Indeed, in groups of uh, 10 fish, <clears throat> the average time bet uh, interval between two successive U-turns is about 20 minutes, while it's about 12 seconds in a group of two fish. So you can see that the average time interval between two uh, successive U-turns increases by two orders of magnitudes when the group size is five times bigger. And the decrease uh, in the number of collective U-turns, in fact, is mainly a consequence uh, of, the, uh, of the fact that the probability of a fish to initiate and propagate a U-turn decrease as group size uh, increases. So individual fish tend to adopt the behavior of uh, the majority of the group members, uh, and, and, and this tendency, in fact, inhibit the initiation uh, of U-turns. Now, who are these individuals that initiate uh, collective U-turns, and under what condition does it happen? In fact, in, in all group size that we have investigated, we found that collective U-turns were usually initiated by the fish 
uh, that were located at the front of the school. And once a fish has decided to make a U-turn, the change of the swimming direction propagates uh, toward the, 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 the rear of the group. Uh, as you can see here, uh, when we plot uh, the, the, the average position of individual according to uh, their rank of, uh, of turning when the U-turn is uh, initiated. And we also found that all collective U-turns are preceded by a period during which the school slows down. And in fact, as the, 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 the fish uh, speed decreases, the, the school is in a state close to a transition between a, a schooling state, uh, which is characterized by a strong alignment between fish, and a swarming state, which is uh, characterized uh, by a weak alignment. And in a previous work, we have shown that when uh, a school is close uh, to this transition between these two states, the swarming and the schooling, the fluctuation in the swarming, uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the swimming direction of the fish increases, but also the school as a whole becomes very sensitive to uh, a perturbation that may affect uh, the behavior of a single fish. So this may explain why all the U-turns uh, occurs after the group has collectively slowed down in our experiments because the, the, the school uh, is uh, in, in a state near this uh, transition between these two states. Then how uh, does the U-turn propagate uh, within a school once it has been initiated? So if we look at the uh, average uh, time interval between the successive turn of individuals, we can see that it is almost constant uh, in a given group size. So we found no evidence for the existence of a dampening or an amplification of information as fish adopt the uh, new direction of motion. There is, no, uh, there is no amplification like that. And uh, moreover, <coughs> on average, uh, the, the turning information propagates faster in larger groups, uh, as you can see uh, here on the right, and this happens to be a consequence of just the increase of the swimming speed with, with the uh, group size, which requires that individuals react faster. And you can see, uh, indeed, on the right, that the, uh, the, the reaction time of uh, individual decreases with group size. And if we normalize uh, the time interval between the successive turns of, in, uh, of individual by the average uh, speed of the group, you can see that all curves now collapse <coughs> on the same curves, which suggests that the shorter uh, reaction time, uh, which is observed in larger group, is mostly due to their uh, faster swimming speed. So once a U-turn has been initiated, the wave of turning propagates uh, in, in a sequential way, and this is similar to a chain of falling dominoes in which the time interval between uh, two successive uh, falls is constant without any positive feedback. So what does it tell us exactly uh, about the underlying uh, phenomenon? This, this, this uh, phenomenon uh, suggests that, in fact, each fish mainly copy the behavior of a small number of its neighbors. Now, uh, how do these fish copy the behavior of their neighbors and what are the interactions between uh, individuals? We have recently characterized and modeled the functional form of uh, uh, this interaction from experimental data. So this uh, Epigramus species perform uh, this kind of, of swimming. It's a burst and ghost type of swimming which is characterized by sudden, uh, sequ uh, a sequence of sudden increase uh, in speed, followed by mostly passive uh, gliding period. And if we look at uh, the variation uh, of, of the velocity uh, with time, you can clearly see this succession of short acceleration phase, uh, followed by a gliding phase in which the velocity uh, decreases. So we call this event during which uh, the, 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 the fish change its velocity and its direction of motion a kick. And most changes in fish heading occur exactly at the onset of the acceleration phases. So we can analyze the uh, fish uh, trajectories as a, series of, as a series of discrete behavioral decisions in time and space. And we can describe the trajectory as uh, a succession of segments and angular changes between uh, the segments. And here in our experiments, we found that the the average duration between kicks uh, was close to 0 0.5 seconds uh, when, both, when both fish were swimming uh, 
either alone or in pair, and the mean length covered between uh, two successive kicks was about uh, 70 millimeters, which is a little bit more than uh, two body lengths. But the main interest of this burst and glide swimming mode is that we can use the special location where uh, the kick uh, uh, have been performed by the fish to identify the potential stimuli or the potential information in the neighborhood uh, that could have elicited uh, their behavioral response. For, for instance, in this situation, when a fish is swimming alone, the information which is used by the fish can be, for instance, the distance uh, to the wall or its orientation with regard uh, to the wall. So we can measure the, the behavioral response of fish, uh, which is the amplitude of the uh, angular change uh, when they detect the wall. And what we observe is that a fish mainly avoid the wall when he comes close to the wall. He uh, perform a, a, a kick that avoid, uh, that uh, send, send him uh, away from the wall. And this curve, in fact, corresponds to the intensity of the uh, avoidance reaction of the fish as a function of the distance to the wall. Here the fish is close to the wall, here it's far. And you can see that the range of interaction of uh, that wall is about uh, two body legs. And the color dots that you can see here corresponds, in fact, to the experimental data that we have gathered in uh, different arena size. Uh, and you can see that the reaction of fish, in fact, do not depend on uh, the uh, size of the tank and the pink, the pink curve that you can see here, in fact, is just the fitted function uh, to this data that we can uh, use in the model. Uh, what we can also observe is that the intensity of the fish reaction is strongly reduced when a fish is parallel to the wall. Here it's when it's, it's uh, minus 90 degrees or 90 degrees. Um, so uh, so th th this is interesting because when the fish is, is parallel to the wall, in fact, it, it seems to, uh, to be uh, not really uh, interact with, with, with the wall. And when the fish is far from the wall, it no longer interacts with that wall. And you can see that in this situation, in fact, the distribution of angular changes between two successive kicks is a narrow Gaussian, which is peak on zero. And this uh, Gaussian distribution uh, introduces a kind of directional inertia uh, in the fish movement. Now, what about the interaction between fish? Here are the results that we have obtained. I'm not going into the, the, the detail uh, about the way we, uh, we extract this, uh, this uh, interaction function, but we can go back to this, uh, to this paper uh, to have all the, all the detail. It's a little bit uh, technical. And uh, what we found is that there is a continuous combination of attraction and alignment interaction whose intensity depends on the distance, on the angular uh, position, and on the relative orientation of uh, individuals. So the strengths of this attraction and alignment behavior depend on three parameters. And this makes very difficult the use of simple 2D ma behavioral maps to characterize and then model uh, the functional form of this interaction between fish. So first, if we look at uh, <coughs> the uh, influence of the distance between fish on the intensity of the alignment and attraction, you can see when the distance of fish is less than uh, 30 uh, millimeters, which correspond to one body length, there is a short range repulsion. This is the, the, the attraction. You can see here it's a negative attraction, so it's a, it's a repulsion. And then at the distance between the fish increases, the attraction here in red becomes uh, more important and reaches a maximum value around 200 millimeters, which corresponds about to six to seven uh, body lengths. We also found that the alignment interactions dominates uh, the attraction up to 2.5 body lengths, while the attraction becomes uh, more uh, dominant uh, for larger distance. And as the distance between the fish increases even more, attraction, the attraction must, of course, decrease, something like that. Uh, but we have not been able to measure this, this, this effect because of the limited uh, size of the experimental uh, tanks and also because of the lack of data because uh, we, in fact, uh, have, we, we do not have a lot of situation when the two fish were uh, far away uh, from each other. And the full line that you can see here, in fact, corresponds to the functional forms of the attraction and alignment interaction that, uh, that can be fit to the experimental data. We can also clearly see that the, the behavioral response of fish are strongly modulated by 
uh, the, the anisotropic perception of their environment, and this leads to a, an asymmetry of uh, the uh, in interactions between fish, depending on their relative position. In particular, you can see that the maximum amplitude of the uh, alignment interaction here in blue is when uh, a neighboring fish is located uh, either on the front right or on the front left, and then you can see that it decreases uh, as the, the focal fish, as the, 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 the neighbors move uh, toward the back of the, of the focal fish. So the for social force, which is exerted by uh, the fish J on a fish I, is much more important than the social force which is exerted by the fish I on fish J uh, when J is in front of I. And this asymmetry of the interactions may explain also why the U-turns are mostly initiated by the fish that are located uh, uh, at the front of the group. And indeed, at this position, the individual experiences a weaker influence uh, from the uh, other fish. So these frontal individuals are much, uh, they are much subject to, uh, to heading fluctuation, especially when the, the uh, speed of the group de decreases, and as a consequence, they are less inhibited to initiate a U-turn. Then we have checked that uh, the implementation of these interaction functions uh, in a burst and glide model qualitatively and quantitatively reproduce the, the movements of pair of fish in a circular arena. You can see that the fish tend to stay close to the wall uh, and also close to each other, but the temporary leader, which is in the front, is much more closer than uh, the uh, temporary uh, follower. So we find a very good agreement uh, between the, the, the model and the experiments if we consider the distance between the fish, but also uh, their, uh, the distribution of the orientation of fish with regard to the world. But the big question is to understand how a fish integrates multiple interactions uh, with the other fish and how the combination of these interactions affects its behavior. So to better understand the combined effect, uh, the combined impact of the tendency of, uh, of a fish to adopt the behavior of a few uh, uh, of, uh, of its neighbors, what we call social conformity, of the asymmetry of interaction between fish, and also the impact of uh, group size on uh, the, the propagation of information during collective U-turns, we build a easing type spin model it's a very simple model. So in this model, each fish is represented by an agent that can only move in two directions, either clockwise or uh, anti-clockwise. When it moves clockwise, its direction is minus one. When it moves uh, and plus one, when it moves uh, anti-clockwise. And in the model, <coughs> the relative position of individual and the interaction networks are kept fixed. Here you can see, which is obviously a simplification. However, one can justify this simplification because during a, the very few seconds before a U-turn, the topological structure of the group uh, doesn't change much, in particular for the fish which is located uh, at uh, the, the front of the group. So the agents are positioned in, uh, in staggered row that correspond to the fact that when group size is increasing, the shape of the group becomes more uh, elongated. And in this configuration, each agent in the model can only interact with um, uh, a small number of their direct neighbors between one and, and two. And the strength of the interaction between an agent I and its neighbor J uh, only depends on two parameters. The first one, J, control the strength of social conformity, so the strength with which a fish adopts the behavior of its neighbor, and as a consequence, uh, this parameter here controls uh, the, the stiffness of the group behavior. And the second parameter, alpha, controls the anisotropic perception of the fish uh, and the asymmetry of interaction. So this, this parameter accounts for the fact that the fish, a fish reacts stronger uh, to a frontal stimuli. So when J uh, is in front of I, uh, alpha IG equal one plus epsilon, and when I is uh, when J is behind I, it, it equal uh, one minus epsilon. And epsilon is a coefficient of asymmetry that uh, is kept constant for all group size. So at a given moment, <clears throat> we can. Uh, compute the propensity of an individual to make a U-turn, and this propensity only depends on its current direction and the direction of its neighbor and the strengths of uh, the uh, interaction. And this propensity to make a U-turn reflects in some way the, the level of discomfort of an individual 
That can be expressed in the following way. You can see that the, the level of discomfort, the discomfort of fish uh, I is minimum when all fish are, uh, uh, when all its neighbors are uh, locally aligned and maximum when uh, the fish, in fact, is in opposite direction uh, of all its neighbors. So when a fish flip, then we can compute the change of its uh, discomfort, which is associated with a, a probability to accept the turn, and the strength uh, of the social conformity, a J, that you can see here, controls the nonlinearity uh, of the acceptance of, uh, pro of the acceptance probability. And you can see that for high, high value of, uh, of J, if the turn would increase the, the discomfort of the, of the agent, uh, the probability to accept uh, the turn is very low, and on the contrary, if the turn uh, would, in fact, uh, decrease the level of discomfort, you can see that the probability uh, to accept uh, the, the turn is very high. So we use this model to explore both the impact of J and epsilon on the collective dynamics, and we found a couple of values for these parameters that lead to a fair agreement with, uh, between the simulation result and the experimental data for all group size. In particular, the model uh, here in red uh, quantitatively reproduce the effect of group size on the dynamics of collective U-turns. So the number of collective U-turns decreases as collective U-turn uh, uh, increases. And we also find in the model that the tendency of individuals to initiate a U-turn and move in the opposite direction uh, uh, of the other fish decreases with uh, group size here. The model also reproduces quite well the impact of group size of, so on the probability to uh, initiate a, a U-turn. And uh, the simulation of the model also reproduces quite well the, the sequential propagation of information, both in space and time. And in particular here, you can see on this graph the, the crucial impact of the anisotropic perception of fish, which is controlled uh, by uh, epsilon here. So this is in gray, this is uh, when there is no anis anisotropy. So you can see that, uh, in fact, the information, the, the, the U-turn can be initiated both at the front and at the back uh, of, of, of the school. There is no uh, more uh, asymmetry. And uh, in the model, in fact, these individuals that, that initiate a U-turn are located at the boundaries of the group. And since uh, these individuals have the same probability to initiate a U-turn, you can see uh, that when there is no uh, asymmetry, they, uh, in, in fact, there is no particular direction, uh, no particular direction is, is favored, and the U-turn can propagate from the front to the back or to the back uh, um, and uh, to, to, to the front. So the anisotropic perception of fish impose a directionality uh, to uh, the propagation wave. The model also reproduces qualitatively well the linear propagation of information at the uh, individual scale. So how the U-turn propagate within, uh, within the group. And we find in the model the same domino-like uh, propagation of uh, direction of motion across the group that we uh, have observed in uh, the uh, experiments. And finally, the model predicts that once we scale, uh, but the U-turn duration, in fact, the average uh, uh, swimming direction profile during a collective U-turn is independent of the group size. So you can see that despite the fact that we have only two free parameters uh, in our model, G and Epsilon, that we have also fixed topological uh, configuration and only nearest neighbor uh, interaction, you can see that the model is able to reproduce quite well uh, the, the, the chains of turning decision and also the main phases of, uh, the, uh, experimental, uh, of, of, of the experiments. So to summarize our results, you have seen that the, the, the detailed uh, quantitative analysis of the propagation of information within a group during these collective U-turns, uh, both at the individual and collective scale, uh, has shown that the speed decrease facilitated the amplification of fluctuation in the uh, heading of the group, uh, which can trigger uh, the U-turn. And this observation is in agreement with uh, our previous uh, uh, theoretical uh, prediction. We have seen that there is a linear propagation of information in all group size, uh, and that the time between uh, two successive uh, individual performing U-turns doesn't decrease with the number of, uh, uh, of fish that have already performed a U-turn. This means that there is no amplification of the individual tendency to perform a U-turn. And the fact that we observe this linear propagation also suggests that each fish only interact with a few, a small number 
of, uh, of their neighbors, typically one and two. And we get, in fact, a similar, um, a similar result using a different kind of analysis based uh, this time on short-term correlation, duration correlation, that also showed that the movement choice of a fish are affected only by one or two uh, influential neighbors, and the fish regularly shift from one neighbor uh, to, the, uh, to the others. And we have also seen that a uh, simple model that integrates this effect of social conformity, that is the nonlinear tendency uh, of individuals to imitate the behavior of a, a small number of, uh, uh, of its close neighbor, and that also integrate the asymmetric interactions between fish, reproduce the sequential propagation uh, of information uh, within the group, and at least for the, 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 the group size that we have studied uh, in the experiment, and also the main features of the dynamics that we observed in our experiments. Finally, I would like to, to thank uh, all these people that have been involved in this work in the past, uh, in the past five years, so Valentin Le Cheval, Daniel Calovi, Alexandra Lichinko, Li Zheng, and uh, Pierre Tichit in my group in Toulouse. Also, Charlotte Emmerich, uh, who um, co-supervised the PhD thesis of Valentin Le Cheval. Hugues Chaté from uh, the, uh, the French Atomic Energy Com uh, Commission, and Clément Cyr uh, from the uh, Theoretical Physics Lab in Toulouse. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guy.